And we know what's going on in this country, right? We know what we're protesting. What, there's looters, there's protesters. We know that buildings is being burnt. We know people's been hurt. Uh, we know that there's been wrong. Amen. There's been wrong and there. There hasn't been uh, justice. And, and there's uh, this word called racism that's in the midst. Amen. Uh, racism that, that shouldn't be in the midst of, of God's people as well. It shouldn't be in the midst of the world, but, but, but it's there. And it goes to the point of Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And that's truly what it is. It's a lack of knowledge. It's a lack of knowledge. There's a lack of knowledge about the human race. I don't know about you, but you know what? There's one race and it's human race. It's not a white race. It's not a black race. It's not a brown race. It's not a Chinese, a Japanese. You know, it's not a yellow, red, green race. It, you know, it, it's not any of that. It, 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 it's a human race. It's a human race. And we have to understand, we have to get that within our hearts that you know, there's one race and it's the human race. And that's the first part of knowledge of receiving that, you know what? It, it, it's not about a color. It's about being a human. It's a human race. See, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And I believe it's knowledge is what we need. And we need to act upon that knowledge. We need to receive this knowledge. We need to change and we need to live our lives different based on this knowledge. This is why we're destroyed because we don't know. Because we're not being part of it. We're not taking it in. It says in Genesis 2-7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. See, see, God created man. We're all out of the dust, amen? Uh, who's the one that breathed life into man? It was God Almighty. He gave life, and he's the only one that's allowed to take life. That's how humans became. Because God took something out of the dust of the earth and he breathed life because God is life. I've picked up dirt playing outside and I've never seen, I've never, I have never ever seen, have seen the same pile of dirt in my hand, the same color. It's always a different color. Every scoop's a different color. But we're living in a time of racism, right? We're living in a time of difficulties. We're living in a time of these. You know, it, it's amazing how the Lord God formed man of the dust of the, of the ground, and he breathed life into us. It's amazing how each individual has a unique set of fingerprints. There's no fingerprints that are the same. There's no DNA that's the same. That's the reason why they can use it in a court of law because no one has the same DNA. You want to know something else? No one has the same skin color, the same skin pigment color. It's not, no one has the same color skin because we don't have the same color DNA. Just as our fingerprints are unique, so is our skin color. It's not about the brown man. It's not about the white man. It's not about black man. It's not about a yellow man. It's not about a red man. It's not about any, any color man. Amen? Because we're all unique. We're created in his image. There's no one that's exactly the same on the outside. But in the inside, we all bleed red. We're all in need of a Savior. We all fall short. And the blood of our Savior is the same color applied to each and every life. See, we're all unique. We're all created in his image. It says in Genesis 1, 26, then God said, let us make man in our image. Whose image? His image. According to our likeness. Whose likeness? His likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So God did the creating. Amen? God created all things. And I love the fact that he, he said, you're going to have dominion over this, this, this. But he never said you're going to have dominion over man. You're going to have slavery. You're not going to have... You know, he never said that you're going to have dominion over man or a woman. 
He said, you're going to have dominion over the fish. You're going to have over dominion over this. You're going to have dominion. But you know what? I, I, it's, you're supposed to live freely. You're supposed to love your neighbor. I, I just love what Matthew 22, 36 says. And this is red letters. This is the second you know, teacher, which is the great commandment in the law. This is, you know, this is what Jesus, in red letters, this is what Jesus said. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. He pretty well summed it up. So let's define neighbor. What's my neighbor? Who's my neighbor then? Your neighbor is every individual that has the breath of life from God. Everyone sitting in this room is a neighbor. Everyone outside these walls are a neighbor. We're supposed to love our neighbors. We're supposed to love people. That's our neighbors. That's a great commandment. God first, and then love your neighbors. Who's your neighbor? Everyone that I decided to give life to. It's not color. He didn't say love a certain color. He didn't say love this. He, he said, you know what? You're going to love your neighbor and your neighbors, everyone that I chose to give life to. That I chose, God Almighty chose to give life to. See, we've been dealing with racism since day one. We've been dealing with slavery since day one. Racism was back in, in Moses' time. Look, you can look at Numbers 12.10. Look at Miriam, how Miriam and her husband decided to come against Moses. Because, see, Moses married a, a wife, a woman of another color. It, you know, it, it was a different skin color. It was some, you know, a little bit different. It wasn't just like, Moses, you know what? You're my brother, and there's something different about your wife. But, see, they murmured together, and God heard it. And God says, you know what? I don't, Moses doesn't even know about it, but I do. Moses is a chosen one. I, I've allowed Moses to marry whoever he wanted because it's not the outside that I'm looking at. It's the inside that I'm looking at. You know, I, and so, so Miriam, since, since this, since you murmured and your husband murmured, what I'm going to do is, you know what, since you can't look in the inside, only the outside, what I'm choosing to do is I'm going to put leprosy upon you. So I'm going to put something upon you physically so you'll start taking a look at the inside. You're going to be outside the camp for seven days because now you're in the midst of racism. And racism is sin. Slavery is sin. Bondage is sin. Oh, you know what? It's sin. So since you are looking at the outside instead of the inside, I'll give you something on the outside. And you'll be sitting outside for seven days thinking about it. Thinking about your murmuring, thinking about your choices, thinking about how, how you're looking at individuals. So, you know, so we see racism within the Bible. We see slavery within the Bible. Amen. We see that, you know what, slavery started where the Israelites were enslaved, Jewish people enslaved to the Egyptians. And then, then we see where the Egyptians were enslaved to the Jewish people. Oh, we see where white people uh, were enslaving uh, African American black people. And then black people were enslaving, uh, you know, white people. See, the, the color has no option within slavery because there's so many colors that's been in slavery. We can see it throughout the Bible, amen? And it doesn't make it right. I want us to understand that there is only one race and it's the human race. Do we understand that? This word racism, the word itself is not a sin, but the act of is. See, race, human race, there's one. There's nothing wrong with the human race. Amen. But see, I love this, this word ism. You know, and I was studying it a little bit. And, and, and I, I, I started studying. And what's this ism? You know, is it really a word? And, and it's, it's a, it is a word. Ism. I-S-M. It's what's been attached to race. Racism. And this word ism is an oppressive and especially discriminatory attitude of belief. It's just amazing how God makes something so perfect, so great, human race, and then we have Satan that wants to add a little ism to it, amen? 
He wants to add something because he's trying to destroy what God's created so beautiful. Oh, you know what? Let me just, I, I need to add some ism to the race because you know what? I need him to start dividing because that's exactly what Satan tries to do is he wants to divide anything that's of God. See, God said, you know what? There's one race. You know what? There's one God. It says in, his, uh, in the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Ekad, one. There's only one God, but see, Satan's trying to destroy that. How many times has Satan tried to destroy that there's, oh, you have multiple gods. Oh, there's only one God, but since he can't destroy the one God, what's he trying to do? He's trying to destroy the human race, a creation of God, a divine appointment, a divine creation, a divine life of God. Oh, made in his image, so let me go and let me put some ism in the race because I'm trying to have some division. Why do you think Satan tries to do this? Everything God comes out with, Satan's trying to have an opposite. What do you think we did with the rainbow? What do you think we did with Christ? We add anti to it, and now we have antichrist. See, Satan's trying to divide. He couldn't divide God, so he's trying to divide his people. And he's trying to divide it in colors, in finances, in all areas. There's only one race, but man, let me get in there and try to divide it. You don't look the same. You don't act the same. Oh, let me try, let me stir up the, everything. Let me, you know, just think what we could do. Look at Babylon, what they were able to build, this tower that they were able to build. But see, unfortunately, they had the wrong heart. And they had a heart of pride because they were trying to elevate themselves above God. But you know what? Just think of the unity that they, you know, now let me confine. You know, let me, I, I've got to give them all different languages. God had to do that because of their pride. But see, Satan's trying to do that so we don't have unity and come together as the body of Christ and serve the Jehovah, our I am, our God. He's trying to divide. He's trying to divide the nations. He's trying to divide God's creation. That's what he's trying to do. Why do you think he wants to divide marriages? Why do you think he comes after marriages? Because it's a covenant. It's a divine appointment, a man and a woman together. And Satan doesn't like anything that God puts together because everything God put, puts together brings life. And he's trying to destroy life. This is what Satan tries to do. So we have this word racism and we're dealing with this. What happened is completely unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. And it's not called for, but I, I'm blaming the church. I'm blaming each and every one of us. I'm blaming, you know, it, it's for us to stand up. It's for us to get the ism out of the race so we can stand up together as the human race, as, as one body, as one individual. See, we have been dealing with this slavery and racism since day one. So it's nothing new, is it? We disguise it. Let me just go a little bit further. Racism is real and it exists. The first black man slave owner in America was Anthony Johnson. There was black slave owners in Africa. There was white slave owners. Israelites owned slaves. Jewish people were slaves from the beginning. Why? It all started when we ate off the tree. It's called sin. It's called sin. We ate off the tree, racism sin. To look at another individual by their color is a sin. We have to look at the inward parts. See, the only two divisions that God ever had was a Jew and a Greek. He came for his chosen people so they would preach the gospel to the Greek. But his chosen people denied him, so he went and preached the gospel to the Greek. So the only divisions that we have is believers and unbelievers, but it's for the believers to, to love the unbelievers so we can win them over for the Lord so that we come together as one body. It's not about color. But see, it's the God that we serve that frustrates Satan. It's the God that we serve that, that wants to get in the midst of it. But see, see, I say all this and I let you know that there's been white slave owners, there's been black slave owners, there's been Jewish slave owners, there's been Egyptian slave owners, but there's something different that's within this country. See, we can use that as an excuse, but the problem is it, it's not an excuse if it's in a reality, amen? And the reality is, is we're dealing with racism right here in this country. And it, it's different than what we think is because you know what, uh, I, I just gotta be honest with you. You know what, the white folk don't get it. The white individuals 
don't get it because we haven't been in that situation. We haven't come from those roots. We haven't come from a situation where we're judged and we're looked at differently. We're, we're not, in, and it's for us to be able to reach out and be honest. That's what I did through this time. It was a great opportunity that I reached out to some of my friends. And, and I got them on the phone, and, and I'm going to meet with them face-to-face -face as well. And it's individuals that I've known for years, and, and these are friends. And, and I ask them. First thing I do is I ask them, you know what? We know what, you know what we're going through. Yep. As your white friend, as a white brother, a white husband, a white father, a white believer, what am I missing? What am I missing? What don't I see? How am I not hurting like you are? What don't I understand about the situation? I don't, I, I'm, I'm not getting every, what, what am I missing? Because this can't keep, this can't keep going. When we stand together, I have to feel the same pain that you're feeling. I, I have to understand the same situation. You need to educate me. I, I need to understand because something's going wrong because we we're, we're keep repeating history. You know, see, the problem is, is we, we want to remove history. And then the problem is with removing history, then we want to repeat history. Why do you think they want to get rid of the Holocaust? Because, you know what, Hitler killed 6 million Jews, over 6 million Jews. And, you know, what? If, if we allow the world to erase that from history, then we're going to repeat history. And the problem is, is we've been repeating history history because we're we're eliminating it we're not talking about it and we need to have some honest communication and this is the reason why I got on the phone and I said you know what I, I need I need an honest answer what as a white individual as a white man of God what am I missing what do I need to preach what do I need to stand for what does what does something need to be changed in my life how do we change this that we can build bridges of relationships throughout the community and destroy racism once and for all because it should be able to start in the church where it's going to be destroyed because that's where sin should bow down to the altar so what am I missing it was a great conversation I had this conversation with my dad because my dad was a police officer years ago and he told me anytime you get pulled over you want to make sure you roll down the windows and always stick out your hands because you know the police officers are trained to always expect the worst because they want to go home to their kids and their family right so there, that's what, so, so I had that conversation, but I, I didn't have the conversation to the point like what he was telling me. Yeah, well, I'm glad you asked. Something that needs to be talked about. Do you teach your kids how to treat a police officer? Do you teach your kids that when you encounter this situation with a police officer, how you handle yourself? Do, do you teach your kids not to wear a hoodie out at dark. Maybe you go to the store, do you, do you even think about it when you pick up a hoodie? Do you put it back because of what they might be accused of? Great questions. No, I didn't think of that. No, I, I didn't think of that one either. I didn't think of that one either, that's great. See what knowledge does? See, when I walk in a place, I have to teach my kids that the stairs are okay. Do you have to teach your kids that? That you look past the stairs. You look past the, the, the gawking. You look past the, the, you know what, the color. That's, you didn't have to do that. No, you're right, I didn't. And I hope I don't ever. So I open up this dialogue with my friends because I want to know how to preach. I want to know how to mend. I want to know that we don't repeat history. I, I want to know. And I hope I don't ever have to teach my son not to wear a hoodie or how to do this or how not what to say. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna share this week with with you on on social media of a great article, a great video that I want everyone to watch because it, it, it is important because it, it's easy as a white individual in this country that um, I didn't walk through a lot of things that other individuals walk through, and we take it for granted, and it's for us to stand and ask, what am I missing? Because I don't know if I don't ask. We have to have some kind of communication, because whenever I met my wife. You know, she's Hispanic. She's not white. And when I met her, it, it, was, it was kind of an eye-opening. 
she would open up my eyes definitely. But to watch her walk in a store first and I'm 15, 20 steps back and to see her treated differently until I walk up or see the diamond ring on her finger and then, oh, she must have money because God's blessed us. See her go through this and then you know, all of a sudden she's treated a little different. But whenever I show up on the scene, it's a little different. Amen. So, so it's real and it's happening in our back door. It's happening in the city. It's happening in the community. It's happening in the nations. And we have to stand and we have to fight. I hired a friend that from the Bronx that I just, I love. And we grew a relationship. I hired him. And in fact, he didn't have a driver's license. You know, he was so young out of college that in New York, he didn't need a driver's license because they took the subways and everything. So I, I hired him, um, you know, picked him up uh, from the airport, drove him to home. I picked him up and drove him to work. So for six months before he got his driver's license, him and I, we was able to, you know, we was able to bond and, and we grew this bond. And, and you know, I, I could see that, how people would look at him different. I could see the racism. I could see just because of the color. I could see, and you know what? We talked about that and we grew through this and we was able to dialogue and, and it taught me a lot. And, and I hope that I was able to pour in this young man to all the way to the point where, man, he, he's making six figures. He's up in Indianapolis working for a great company and he's successful. He's in the midst of an interracial marriage. Hey, how about that? He has some beautiful kids. Because he chooses not to look at the outward. He chooses to look at the inward. But I've seen individuals that this sin, this racism is too strong. And we have to destroy it. We have to eliminate it. And the only way we can eliminate it is if we build a bridge of communication where I can come and I can see what's going on and I can understand where you're hurting. I can understand where you don't feel like you've been heard. I, I don't agree with all the, the looting and the protesting of burning down buildings and and throwing stuff through windows. I don't agree with that because there's a proper way. Amen. Some individuals are protesting and they have no idea why they're protesting. All they know is they get a free TV out of it if this window breaks or some free pizzas. Amen. But there's some individuals that are in the midst of it that don't feel like they're being hurt. They don't know how to, to, to stress their anger. They don't know how to deal with it. And these are the individuals that we need to be able to talk to and we need to be able to stand with and say we're united. It's not about a color. It's about the body of Christ. Because let me just tell you, let me just make sure you understand, it's one human race given, given the opportunity only because our God decided to breathe life into us. And we are all saved by the same blood of Jesus Christ, no matter what the color is. So we should be able to look at the inside instead of the outside and realize we have to come in and stand together. And it has to be in unity. And the only way it's not going to be in unity if we allow Satan to keep dividing and putting the isms and the antis in the midst of everything, that we have to remove that and allow God to be God in our lives and stand together. Realize there's no difference between us because we have the breath of life within us. We have the blood of Christ upon us so we can stand together, but we have to communicate. I need to know what hurts. I need to know your pain. I need to know where we need to stand together. I need to know what we're marching for. I need to, I need to understand so we can march. I, whenever you cry, I want to cry because it's out of the same. It's out of the same sorrow. It's not just because you're crying, I'm crying. It's because I know and I can feel the pain because it's out of the same pain and same hurt. We have to talk about it. It's been a problem. We have to educate ourselves. It's time that we talk more about it, but just not talk, it's time that we do something about it. See, I'm gonna share this video. It's a former NFL player, Emmanuel Aka, I think it is, A-C-H-O, I can't pronounce his last name. He's, he's a NFL player, former NFL player, has started a video series. He's, he is calling Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man which he is posting across his social media channels. So uh, uncomfortable conversations with the black man. And I'm gonna share this because it's about 12 to 15 minutes and it's incredible. And it's about some of his friends that are white that's asking him questions. How about this? How about that? And he set up this atmosphere where there's no controversy, where there's no anger attached to it. Because too many times it's easy that if we disagree or, or it's uncomfortable, we want to attach hatred or anger because we want to run away from the problem. Because the only reason why it's uncomfortable is because we haven't discussed it yet. But if we choose to discuss it, then there's nothing that's uncomfortable. It's the unknown that's uncomfortable. But once I know where you're coming from and I choose to accept it and I choose to go with you and I choose that we're as one, then there's no discomfort at all. 
can ask me any questions. It's a conversation about a black individual. And I love some of the questions that he answered because one of the questions were, well, why is it okay for you guys to say the N-word, but it's not okay for us to say the N-word? And he goes, because you haven't been where we are. You don't understand what we've done. And it's one of those, we, you can use that as excuses, but it's a reality. I haven't walked in their shoes. I haven't put back the hoodie because it's going to turn dark here real soon. I have to worry about what I'm dressed. I have to worry about what I say to the officer. I have to worry about this because you know what? I, I, know, what's been, I know what's been put on me. It's kind of like my wife. You know what? She's Hispanic and, and whenever her family and I, I've seen her cousins and people get around and, and some of the guys, they'll get to joking and, and they use the word essay. Hey, essay. Hey, essay. And you know what? You know, but you know, I threw that out one day and you know, I, you know, a blessing, Mr. Lozandro, which I love to death. He came and said, hey, you know, you know, so did my wife. That might not be what you want to say because you haven't been where we've been. That's not a good word for a white man to say. Well, I didn't know that, but I thank you for letting me know. And this is exactly what he's saying. You know what? You haven't been in that bondage. You haven't been treated like I have. You, you, so so I, I, in, in that realm, you can use that, but not in other realms. It's not for you to say essay. It's not for you, you know, uh, but you got, but they, I had to be educated. Do you understand what I'm saying? It takes knowledge. We need to be educated. I need to understand so I don't disrespect anybody. I just can't jump in, just say whatever I want. You know, there has to be, there, you know, but I don't know unless there's something that's communicated to me. And I love the fact that he allowed himself answer. I'm going to answer whatever questions come. But, I, you know, hear me from the heart. You know what? You haven't been. You haven't walked through the streets. You haven't been judged when you walk through the door. Whenever, before I played football, you know what? I didn't have money. But, you know, I was looked at differently. But now when I drive up in my my Mercedes, now people look at me different because they're looking at the color of the car and the manufacturer of the car instead of my skin color. Right? But we don't know until we talk. So we have to make something that's uncomfortable comfortable because nothing will be resolved until we're comfortable with the situation that it does exist, that it is real. Now, how do we handle it? It says in John 7 24, do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. James 2, 4. Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor man. Do not, do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts do they not blasphemy that noble name by which you are called if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture you shall love your neighbors as yourself you do well God basically said I don't care what situation you're going through I don't know what you're facing I don't care if you're facing unbelievers I don't care if you're facing the other color you know what let me just tell you I've given life they're the same color inside because I live inside so I need you to love each and every individual and I'm telling you you need to love each and every individual that I've breathed life in because they're my creation they're in my likeness. Ephesians 2 14 says, for he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. God has broken that wall down. John 13 34 says, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. Ephesians 4 32 says, and be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. But you know what? Where does it start? It goes back to realizing what Jesus did for us. Was, I don't know about you, but my Bible says that our Father gave His only begotten Son that who should ever believe should have life, right? And my Bible said in red letters, Jesus, that He came for the loss, right? He didn't come for a color, did He? He came for the loss that our Father gave His Son for whosoever shall believe. 
But see, we can preach it, we can talk it, but I don't want Peak to be the same. I need a change in the community. I need a change within our hearts. We need to start building bridges. We need to have multicolored bridges that we walk across to the African-American, that we walk across to the Hispanic, that they're allowed to walk over to us, that we start building these multicolored bridges because bridges haul stuff. It hauls food. It hauls information. It hauls, you know, it's a way of travel. What does a bridge actually do? Where there seems to be no way, it makes a way. In Jesus bridges the way where it seems to be no way it has to be Jesus it has to be a change in my heart that makes a way that I'm choosing to reach out I'm choosing to ask the tough questions I'm choosing to receive the tough questions that it's not about color it's time that we start building these multicolor bridges and we start walking over to our brothers and sisters shaking their hands having a relationship inviting them into our homes coming to their homes and doing life together and realizing that we are all in the same image of God that there's only one race and it's the human race and God almighty God has the final say so in all things and we leave him hallelujah you're in charge guide me and direct me change my heart nothing will change until we take action we can hear it but if I'm not a doer nothing changes and I'm challenging you we need to start building look at look at the church we have African American we have Hispanic we have whites you know this is what God's heaven is going to look like because when we bleed it's all the same color it's all the same color we need multicolor bridges built what the enemy meant for bad I'm going to build a bridge right over it the division that racism let me just build a bridge right over it because you're not going to stop me from building a bridge you're not going to stop me from building a relationship. You're not going to stop me from standing up what's right according to God's word. See, the problem is we have to do something. Why do you think the Passover was so important? Why do you think God, God is so incredible. Why do you think he told Moses, what I need you to do is tell everyone that comes out of Egypt. I need you to sit down with them and make it mandatory that they're going to celebrate the Passover, that every year they are going to sit down with their family and they're going to talk about what I saved them from. What did they save them from? Racism and slavery. Let me just tell you how great God was. I was in the midst of bondage. I was in the midst of strikes. I had stripes on my back. I was, you know what? And God pulled me out of this. See, that education and knowledge is everything. It goes right back to Hosea. We've destroyed ourselves because of lack of knowledge. But see, the knowledge is right here in God's word. The knowledge is written on our hearts, but we have to activate it. Amen? We have to do it. We need to discuss this each and every time. We've discussed with Joshua racism. We've discussed that. You know, he's not all white. He's not all Hispanic. He's half and half. Amen? He understands that. He doesn't look at color. I love the fact that he never ever has mentioned a color on the outside. It's about what's in the inside. Do they have Jesus? I love the fact that when he gets on a game and he has other people, you know, the first question he asks them, do you cuss? And do you go to church? Amen. Because he wants to see if Jesus is in them. He doesn't ask what color you are. He knows the inside's the same. We all have a heart. That's why we say in 1 John 2, 11, but he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. 1 Samuel 16, 7, we know what God says. Do not look at the outside, the physical, but look in the inside. 1 Timothy 5, 21 says, I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that you observe these things without prejudice, doing nothing with partiality. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit, Jesus is their help. Jesus is the one that's going to change it. And it takes Jesus within our heart to be doers. Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all, what? One in Christ Jesus. But I want you to close your eyes. Why don't you close your eyes? I'm going to paint a picture, but I want to make sure you get this picture. It's a little graphic, but it's okay. Now, everyone has a favorite meal, don't you? Whether it's filet mignon, whether it's fish, whether it's chicken. You, you have this special meal, don't you, that you just love. See, mine is barbecue. 
I cannot stand cooked cauliflower, but if you put barbecue on cooked cauliflower, I'll eat it because I love barbecue. But I want you to picture whether it's that filet mignon and that baked potato with that butter oozing out. Or maybe it's breakfast with a big old huge waffle and that syrup running over the side. Maybe it's that fish on that big old huge mound of that rice or maybe mashed potatoes all with the side of spinach or asparagus. Oh man, my mouth is watering already. Yeah, I see the mouths. I need your eyes closed. You gotta picture this. You gotta picture this. This perfect meal. It's an incredible meal that's before you. Has all the trimmings, has your favorite dessert, has everything. And it represents your relationship with God that he's given you the best. It's the word of God. Now, I I need you still, eyes closed. I need you thinking about that meal. Now I eat that meal for you. And then I vomit it up and put it right on a plate beside it. Which one do you want to eat from? Because what God is saying is the reason why nothing changes is because we're eating from regurgitating of someone else's prayers. We're depending on someone else's prayers, mama's prayers, the church's prayers, the elder's prayer. We're relying on someone else's relationship with God. All it is is vomited out. It's just regurgitated. It's pre-chewed. And we're relying on our relationship with God. We're relying on someone else to change it instead of us receiving the meal. God has a meal for us. He wants a relationship with us. He wants us to read his word. He wants the prayer time with us. He wants the best for us. But too many times, our relationship with God is just based off of someone else's. And nothing will change within our heart or with our lives or with this country if it's based off of someone else. You cannot be saved. You cannot grow. You cannot change through someone else's prayer life through someone else reading the word you need a relationship you need a hunger for God and you need a heart change from God Jesus came for the lost not colors you can look at me now Revelation 7 9 says after these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations tribes people peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes with palm branches in their hands That's a picture of heaven. People from all areas, all nations, all tribes. Let me just put it this way. It's going to be all colors in heaven. Because when our Father looks down, He sees one color, and it's the blood of Jesus. We have to stand. We have to look at people as gifts. Can we look at people as gifts? Because I can take and wrap an iPhone and I can give everyone here an iPhone some of you are like hallelujah praise God that's why I'm here today get my new iPhone I give everyone an iPhone and I can wrap it in different wrapping paper right but it's still an iPhone God has put himself in each and every one of our hearts and lives inside And he chose to wrap himself in all these different packages. That's powerful right there. That we're in his image, his likeness, his breath. He lives inside of me and he chooses to wrap himself in this, in you. That's why you're perfect. That's why you're not a mistake. That's why you're not an accident. That's why you're unique. No one's the same. Can we start looking at individuals as a gift that God lives in them? We're all the same. Hey, everyone. Hey, Pastor Daniel. I hope that you enjoyed the message today. Powerful word, powerful word from God. And we want you to get connected with us. We want to hear from you. If you gave your heart to the Lord today from the message, we want to hear from you. Email us at admin 
at peakworship.com and give us the good news so we could celebrate with you. And we want you to check out the website, peakworship.com. And we want you to like us on Facebook and Instagram. You can like me on um, Facebook and Instagram personally. We want to get connected with you. We want to share our hearts with you. And we want to hear more about what's going on in your life. So make sure that you get plugged in and get connected.